Come here, Bella. Come here, Bella. Come on. Bella, come on. Come on, Bella. No, 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 no biting, no, Sadie, stop it, sit, stay, stay, no, stay, Girl, stay such a good girl. Matthew.
Hey, good morning, Tony. can't hear you at all. Say something, Matthew. Something, Matthew? No. Can you hear me at all? Can you hear me now? How about yeah. now? Nope, can't hear a damn thing. How'd you know I said something? I'm just mouthing. <laughs> Is my microphone on? Yeah, I'm not muted. There we go. Damn fancy ear buds. Like an air traffic controller. Now, Tony. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Not me. That motivation in the background about being fit. Morning, everyone. Morning, Wayne. Can't hear you, Dale. See your mouth moving. For like me a minute ago. Hey, Matthew, I'll probably be able to get over there by about 12.30 or 1 tomorrow. What time do they usually finish up by? Uh, I think we usually finish by 5-ish. Okay. Right around 8. There's only five of us for Friday, which is, I, I mean, five more would be great. But uh, it's kind of strange because I can't let any more than 10 people come per ah. day. Saturday, we're capped at 10. We've got 10. Oh, what you had? 
and it's very it's very, very, very yeah oh gosh not like the strawberry <laughs> well i may need to um uh uh this is not supposed to be on computer audio <sighs> Chip. put out at like 12 30 or one on saturday so you know if somebody else was trying to sign up or wanting to sign up and they can do the afternoon you know that you won't be over the cap i guess is what i'm saying but does it matter about the sign up well you know as in political it probably is i'm willing to bet you know 10 or up if 15 show up the foreman on the job site's not going to send five away yeah yeah you know what i mean yes Whatever. Nobody wants this roof to linger over a five-day period till we get back to it the following Friday. Right. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good morning, Justin. Good morning, guys. Well, hey there, professional plumber. I don't, have my, I don't have my license for that. But you and know. your Tim Tebow haircut. Well, you know, looking when good. You're cutting, when you're cutting your own hair, you got to do what you got to do. I'm impressed. I've got the professional mullet going on, and I kind of like it. When I ride my boat, it just flows in the air, and it just feels wonderful. You already got yours. <laughs> you got your pom poms. I'm not muted to say all that. Oh. Good You'll see Mr. Plumber. Look at what shirt he's got on. Hey, Matthew, do we just bring these releases with us, or send them to you? Uh, either uh, just bring them with you. I'll have a stack of them there so people can sign them if they don't bring them. Charlotte, you're going to see Dr. Guy again today. Hey, Guy, can I, um, can I bring my own drill? Does that work? No. no. <laughs> Why not? No, Daddy. Those drills. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, I think you this guy right here, Walt Howell. I'm going to see <laughs> him. No. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. 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 Sounds like my mom on her cell phone. Hello. <laughs>
Tony, I sent you a text if you could read it. So, so Grandpappy said that uh, Zoom meetings reminded him of a seance. That you know, Susan, are you there? Susan, we can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you, but we can't see you. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not Kansas, it's Oklahoma. <laughs> You're really lost. No, <laughs> see. Uh. Seven AM to boot. <laughs> All right, guys, we got about thirty people at seven oh five, so we'll get started with our Zoom meeting. <clears throat> I don't know if everybody saw, but we did get some good news yesterday. We went to phase three in North Carolina. So do, doesn't have a he doesn't have a huge impact on our rotary meetings because the gathering limit is still about the same. So but anyway we're um we'll go ahead and get started with our invocation. Justin, you wanna start us off? Absolutely. So uh now being an Episcopalian with a Southern Baptist mother and a Lutheran father and uh married into a half Jewish, half Catholic family, I'm not sure whether to bore you guys forever or keep you here till after lunch. So <laughs> God, uh, God grant us the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the simple world as it is, not as I would have, trusting that you will make all things right if I sur surrender to your will so that I may reasonably be happy in this life and supremely happy with your, with the, within yours forever in the next. Amen. Um, if you want to say the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America. America. To, to the republic for which, which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, 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 indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice, justice for all. For all. <laughs> and the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Say and do. Is this is true, 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 to fair, fair, fair all concerned, concerned. will it be to build good will, friendship, and friendship, and friendship and and beneficial, and beneficial all concerned. All right. Thank you, Justin. I mu it must get very confusing for Christmas prayers, right? Who says what? Yes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll move on to our birthdays and anniversaries. I saw Rick was on there. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, I am back in on uh, the job here. I'm uh, back from Oklahoma. And uh, before I get any snide remarks from certain ex-presidents who are from Texas about Oklahoma, I won't mention any names, but his initials are Dr. Walt Howe. Um, <laughs> made it back and uh, Texas is still there, Walt. Blow that hot air up all through the country. <laughs> Ah, little thing going Oklahoma and Texas, so we always have to rib each other a bit. Hey, uh, we got some uh, birthdays that uh, uh, coming up, and uh, is Christy on uh, this morning? Okay, I'm not sure if we missed her last week, but if she isn't here this week, then 
will press on. This week, and I know he is here, Mr. Frank Cheney. Happy birthday to Frank. He'll be celebrating a birthday on October 3rd. I believe that's going to be about Saturday. So yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Many more, my man. Uh, uh, we also have a wedding anniversary this week, just one. Uh, Brad Guile, uh, uh, Brad, are you with us today? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, there he is. All right. Thank you, Brad. Uh, I believe you and Sarah are going to celebrate a, a wedding anniversary on the second this Friday, correct? Yep. 16 years. All right. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Um, we have some club anniversaries and, uh, Let's see, Auburn, uh, is Auburn here? Let's see her. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned her last week. She had her second uh, anniversary and uh, the club anniversary. And then this week, Mr. Mike Slane uh, will be celebrating. Uh, Mike, are you here? I thought I saw Mike, maybe not. Well, Mike will be celebrating his 19th year with the club. So that's really a nice mile marker. He's almost been here from the very beginning. So we got that. And, uh, oh, let's see, uh, Mark Reynolds, I think I saw you next week. You've got yourself a um, wedding anniversary coming up on the 10th. So can't say you've forgotten and nobody told you. And uh, that pretty well wraps that up. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, and good to be back. And, uh, Thank you, Rick. You bet. Um, what, but before we do the football pool, Mike, we're going to have a quick announcement. Um, we are not able to do our hybrid live meetings. Um, several, the board and several people are aware of this, so I, we kind of stopped the planning. Tony's going to speak to the club. He just he wanted to come on and explain why, just so we would know what's going on. It's, you know, in Tony's defense, it's not anything he has a lot of control over. So. Um, just to mention, we are we do have it as an agenda item for the board meeting to talk about alternative ways to maybe have some hybrid meetings before the end of the year. So I'll turn it over to Tony. Yeah. Um, thanks, Guy. You know, I uh, first of all, I'm sorry. You know, if I would have uh, had everything to do over again, that would have uh, been slower to roll out the idea um, to the club and really uh, uh, slowed down and look through some of the logistics. Um, we just have found in the last, you know, probably week and a half, two weeks or so that we've had some slightly larger meetings that it's really a, a challenge. And um, our restaurants are doing really well. They're really focused on delivering uh, great experiences to our guests. And every time that we have any event at all, um, we're, we draw energy away from that focus right now. We're just not at a, at a place where um, we can uh, feel good about um, sort of having sustained, you know, weekly meetings. So we've really pared things down um, quite a bit in terms of our sales efforts, uh, really through the end of January at this point. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I, I want, I you know, really wanted this to sort of work out and uh, pushed a little harder than I should have before we had all the data that um, we needed. So um, I'm sorry, uh, but, I'll, you know, I want to help the club uh, figure out, you know, ways that we can actually really get together and, uh, you know, and uh, get some of that camaraderie. I love some of the uh, outside gatherings that I'm seeing pop up, you know, between the um, Danielle, you and your husband sort of opening up your doors. And uh, also, of course, the world's greatest meal at uh, Gail's house. Uh, you know, I think there'll be some camaraderie, um, you know, beginning in, again in that way. So um, anyways, um, that's, that's all I got. All right, Tony. Um so uh, just to kind of give the whole club an update, we are looking at some different venues to meet at least sh short term. We, we definitely don't want to leave though, Henry, they've been a good partner to us and it's a, it's a kind of ingrained in the fiber of our club, but we are looking at some other venues to maybe get together and it might not be every week, maybe every other week or something. So the board will be, that'll be kind of the, the main topic of our discussion and we meet on, I think it's the 13th. So um, if anybody has any ideas they want to share with me, go ahead and send them to me and we'll start working on it and seeing if we can come up with some way for us to meet. There's the, you know, I've asked lots of people this and there's a large number of 
the club that do want to get together and have these hybrid meetings. So, all right. Well, that's that. So, um, Mike, you want to do our football pool? Sure. Uh, good morning, everybody. I want to say that um, I want to follow up on Justin's prayer. I think it's appropriate because last week Guy had the the, uh, the power I've to change a phone meeting with the painted. And I want to uh, compliment him see, on um, taking that. You know, he he had had a computer. He had a prognosticator aided NFL picks. Uh, uh, last week, but this week he decided to be a purist, and I, I want to compliment him for it. Uh, he, uh, he didn't win this week, but he had a nice, uh, a really solid effort, and he should be very proud and, you know, that he, uh, I think he had uh, 20, 21, which was just a couple off of the, uh, uh, just a few off the winner, but on the, on the lower end, it was a real challenge. Um, last week, Tony Villier had what I thought was the, probably the strongest ever loss on the low on the low end it was really good numbers um this week he did not do quite as well but it wasn't enough to to be the the lowest one he finished second um he did not know that lisa simpson would come from nowhere to go nowhere and have the uh, the lowest uh selection so uh lisa i'm really proud of you um you know i think that your picks are inversely proportional to your fundraising abilities and leadership abilities and i'm very <laughs> thankful because that means we're going to have a great year with you um with 14 lisa it was a, a nice beautiful effort uh so you're our our, our low uh, our low tally this week on the uh, on the on the top end we had a real uh, uh, a real uh, fight here um you know uh mike andrus finished in third with with uh, 23 right. And, uh, you know, this week, you know, Buster usually sends me a message. It doesn't say football pool on, on it. It says something else. And I think this week was like utter humiliation or humiliation galore, something like that. Um, but you have nothing to be humiliated about, Buster, because you finished second with 23 and you had the, uh, the, the, the tiebreaker pick right. But in first place, uh, Tom Phoenix, um, 24 right. He had 16 of the of the college games right, which uh, was a really a phenomenal performance. Uh, only eight of the pros, but it was enough to carry the day. So Tom's our winner. Lisa's our other winner at the other end. And thank you all for participating. I'll send out the email um, this uh, this morning, and you'll have until Saturday morning to get it in. Uh, appreciate you guys for playing. Uh, please keep it up. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, Next, I'm going to mention that Crescent is holding their annual fundraiser. Judy had mentioned that she wanted to talk about it. So, Judy? Thank you. Let me pull it up real quick. Sorry. Um, yeah, I got an email yesterday from Karen, and she asked that I would announce this for everyone. Um, Crescent's hosting our annual fundraiser. It's a verse, virtual reverse raffle on October 9th from 6 to 9. She said, I know our clubs have a rich history of supporting each other in, in fundraising efforts. And I was hoping you might be willing to promote our event to your club for the next two meetings. So I'm gonna do it again next week. Tickets are $100 a piece and we're selling a maximum of 200 tickets and ticket holders will have the option to rebuy until a certain point in the event, 10 numbers remaining. The grand prize is $2,500 and we'll have several smaller prizes awarded throughout the event. Um, and she's saying it should be a lot of fun. And if anyone's interested, reach out to me and I'll connect them to Karen um, to buy a ticket. So thank you. Thank you, Judy. Um, I did send that link to everyone. So everyone should have it. If they wanna go ahead and buy a ticket, it's um, Eventbrite. So if it's a reverse raffle, limited number of tickets, nice prize. So if anybody's interested. Next, I'm gonna call on Matthew um, and then Chip to talk about our two service projects going on this weekend. So you get to take your pick. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Um, Friday at between eight and 8.15, whoever's coming, as I sent on the email uh, with the address and all the information put on the roof, uh, I'd love for you to come. Um, we've got five people on Friday, which is more than likely gonna be a, a good start. But the more the better. Uh, they say up to 10, but I don't think they're going to really care. It's just kind of a, uh, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of their deal. But I'm sure the foremans will not have a problem if there's more than 10 people there working. 
uh, I'm just really concerned about getting the roof done this first weekend because I just don't feel good leaving a half roof house over Monday through Thursday of the following week. So if you've got some time, it'd be great. Um, I'm going to buy water, masks. I'll have forms to fill out, everything we need, and hammers, and um, and that's about it. So I'll, again, today send out the link with the address, and uh, that way everybody's got all the information. Any questions? Good. All right. All right Chip, I'm did you want to mention something about the um, Satellite Club service project? Yes, uh, the Satellite Club is having a service project at the Out of the, out of the Garden project uh, at 1 o'clock. Uh, this coming Saturday, the third, uh, we can always use more people out there. We'll actually be working in the warehouse for the first hour or so. And then uh, Christy thinks she'll rotate us and have us delivering food uh, out to the uh, pickup lines out there. But it should be a pretty easy project. I'm sorry we're competing with Matthew. Uh, we'll have to check our schedules better next time. Uh, but anyway, if, um, if you would like, I think we'd love to have you out there. And while I'm talking, I would like to remind everybody that on October the 24th, uh, we're going to Gail Stansel's house for our um, uh, world's greatest meal, which is to raise money uh, to help uh, uh, end polio in the world. And we're very close to doing that. Uh, there have literally been millions of people who participated in this event around the world. Um, uh, over $11 million, over 18 million doses of uh, polio vaccine have been raised through this particular effort. Uh, and so we appreciate your help coming out. Um, uh, I'll send out another email. Uh, you'll hear lots about it as we get closer. Uh, basically, it's sort of like a potluck um, uh, uh, dinner, except for uh, Rick and I and uh, whoever else wants to help cook will be cooking uh, various kinds of barbecue for the thing. It's a practice for us before pig stock on November the 7th. Right, Dan? So anyway, hope to see you all either at a project or uh, at least on the 24th. Thank you. And Mike says save your present on yeah, if I might chime in, just remind everybody, as Chip said, how important this money is because this every nickel goes toward the purchase of those vaccines. And we are so, so close. And uh, we've been here before and, and just barely missed. And this is one opportunity to, to maybe actually get it this time. So I encourage everybody, please be generous with your donation. And uh, please come out and, and enjoy the good food. And, and the fellowship is our practice, but uh, the practice is really world's greatest meal and uh, hardly a better cause for a Rotarian. Yeah, so we're, we're ticking lots of boxes with the, you know, moving on from the service projects. Thank you, Matthew and Chip on that. But the um, world's greatest meal, we're ticking lots of boxes with this. So that is our meeting. That is also our Polio Plus fundraiser. So people are really encouraged to bring donations. And on the polio front, you know, clearing Africa of polio is huge. So we, there's only a couple of countries left to do. And just like any job, the last one or 2% sometimes is the hardest. If, and as Rotarians, we're gonna do it right. So we're gonna keep going until it's done. So if everybody can contribute, the, the money does, mostly go, you know, almost all of it goes towards vaccines. Most of the people that work out there are volunteering. Most of the people that travel pay for their travel themselves. So it's a really good cause and a, a good dollar spent to help prevent disease and save lives. So, um, Dan, did you want to mention pig stock and talk about that? So Dan's got some conflict of interest. I'm not sure where he's going to be, if he's going to be at Gail's house or he's going to be at his office, but I've got invites to both. So is Dan on? Yeah. We're, we're off and rolling. I think we've already, um, we've already hit the $3,000 mark because funds raised. So things, things are going. Everybody's got the link. Um, when you open the link, please make sure you go to Gate City to donate on our site. Uh, it's all the same link. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to be rolling around. I just got to find somebody to be my designated driver because I enjoy this too much. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing everybody on the 7th uh, at Gail's house. And then we'll have awards at my office uh, that afternoon. Gail's oh. house is the 24th. Gail's house is the 7th. Oh, the 7th too? Oh. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, Gail is, and thank you, Gail, for agreeing to host <laughs> our club two times. So as a reminder to everybody, make sure you take appropriate precautions. We're all adults. Matthew's marginal, but 
we're all adults, so we'll we'll make sure we all stay safe. We all do the right things. We don't want to create any tragedy out of this fellowship. So everybody make sure they take appropriate measures to stay safe in this venture. And you know, we're we're I believe we're at the end of the tunnel here, you know, as the vaccine gets rolled out and we get to a point where people can come back together. So let's see if we can push through the last little bit of this pandemic as well without people being overly ambitious or rambunctious and getting sick. So that's all I have to talk about. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Danielle to introduce our speaker. Good morning, everyone. Um, so John Bennett and I, who's our speaker this morning, he and I met through a chamber networking event several months ago. And I'm not sure how John feels, but I'm really grateful that our paths crossed. He's a stellar guy, great thinking partner and senior partner of Fractional Sales Management Group here in Greensboro. Um, interesting fact about John is that he's a former Gate City Rotarian member, and he's got an amazing background that's taken him all over the world. So without further ado, I will turn it over to John. Thank you, Danielle. I, I really do appreciate it. It's, it's been a pleasure working with her on her project. Um, um, and I think we're making some really good headway. Uh, I want to take a moment and share a screen, and uh, hopefully everybody can see it right now. But uh, um, hang on just a second. There you go. Okay, it should be sharing. Um, I want to thank everybody for having me here. Uh, actually, um, as Daniel said, I was a former member of Rotary, and uh, I see some faces here that I remember, and it's really nice to see everybody. Um, you know, I know we're all tired of talking about COVID-19. Uh, but there are some elements as it relates to business that I think are important as we begin to come out of 2020. Is there a echo? Okay. Um, but what I want to do first is just talk briefly about um, who we are and what we do. Um, Fractional Sales and Management Associates. Um, we are an outsourced management company. We work with our clients on a part-time basis, similar to the concept of a CFO. We work through a more long-term approach guiding companies for change, sometimes challenging the existing norms. Um, as with any other senior leadership, we address an array of issues with our clients, such as budgets, strategy, sales, and a whole bunch of other issues. Now, I'm not here to sell, but what I do wanna talk about is life after, this amazing 2020. So let's jump into this. <sighs> At the end of 2019, nobody would have dreamed that a pandemic would be the main issue that we would be addressing in 2020. It's affected everything in our lives and in our businesses. Now, I'm not an alarmist, okay? But let's take a moment and think, this same scenario could be a factor in coming years. And what we wanna do is, talk about planning for it, thinking about it, having that part of our DNA that we're moving forward with. So talk about how, what we've learned and how we should, that should influence our decisions moving forward. You know, in, all 20, in 2019, we were all rolling along, managing the moving parts of a business. Yeah, those moving parts, product development, compliance, revenue, service delivery, you know, those are the pieces that we all manage in our businesses. And, you know, and as we look outside of the business, what are those factors that come into play that we all have to think about? You know, we think about market trends, demographic shifts, product innovation, new competition, and pandemics. Who would have thought about that? As we regress on this a little bit, you think about product innovation, you know, gas automobiles versus electric automobiles. My gosh, we're having this meeting over a conference call. That's an innovation. Now, yes, conference, video conferencing has been around for years, but not to the level that it has. You know, this video conferencing may have been applicable five years from now, but this transition, this pandemic has moved this forward. So what's now going to replace it in the next two or three years? If we take a look at new competition, you know, 50 years ago, Sears was the juggernaut. 
Walmart replaced Sears. Sears began to crumble. Amazon has come in. Now they are giving everybody a challenge. And Sears is barely alive. You've got AOL, which was, you know, the large internet service provider. They're out of business. You've got Google. So yes, business, businesses do have new competition and change. As it relates to pandemics, like I said, a lot is being moved forward very quickly. You know, as we emerge from 2020, we want to stress, we always stress to our clients to take stock of where they were prior to the pandemic and actively address this shifted paradigm. Now, let me qualify this by saying this is only a high level overview. It's to get people thinking about this and, and, and maybe stretch those boundaries of how you look at your business. You know, we suggest ask the difficult questions about your business and its strategy. You know, this may be the new normal. Much of the way we work may have changed permanently. A lot will go back to the way it was. No, next year we're not going to be flying in jet cars and all that. But some of the things like video conferencing, the way we do business, how we make certain our companies are not going to be caught off guard will change possibly permanently. You know, some of the changes are the accelerated digital transformation. Um, retail is a prime interest, I mean, uh, a prime element here. Uh, shifts in the business alignments, partnering with other companies. Uh, population shifts, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, you know, business, businesses should retool to the new environment to become even stronger than what they are today. You know, we talk to our clients that there are four important, important strategic questions that you should be asking. You know, what is the new definition of risk management? What is that new look for your strategic priorities? How can you reimagine your operating system? And what is tomorrow's winning business formula? Let's talk about that first one, risk management. Risk management for this discussion has three elements. Prediction, that is identifying the scenarios and assigning values to those scenarios. Adaptation, setting the checkpoints to gauge and redirect as necessary. Being resilient, being adaptable to those differences or shocks that are not in the plan. You don't want to hit a speed bump in the middle of the road and it shuts your business down. You want to be able to handle those shocks and you want to be able to Set those checkpoints to where you know, is it a speed bump or is it a wall you're getting ready to hit? So these things need to come into the risk management scenario. You know, if you think about these three elements, global supply chains are based on low cost and just-in-time production, right? Well, they found themselves without supplies because of disruption. Moving forward, managers may look or could look at which parts of the moving chain or the value chain do we manage for cost? Which do we manage for redundancy? There is a balance between cost and redundancy based on any particular industry. Additionally, many businesses had outsourced call centers across multiple countries to guarantee that redundancy. Yet they found themselves without support when employees didn't have access to laptops or broadband at home. That multinational redundancy didn't survive a single day in a multinational lockdown. The takeaway from this is you really need to drill deep to find those weak points. They're not gonna be obvious. That nail in the road is not gonna be seen as you're driving down it. You've gotta look for it. And that's what we, we advise our clients to make certain you're thinking about these things. You know, there is not a no risk world. You need to identify the risk assign the values, and being adaptable and plan accordingly. As you look at your business or as you review your business, think how everybody's strategic priorities may change. The industry landscape is going to change. Changes have accelerated, been accelerated by this pandemic. The way we do business, the way we communicate, yeah, there are so many different elements that are changing. They've been accelerated, and now they're going to become part of our world. You know, brick and mortar retail has been severely affected by this virus. You know, this virus may have sounded the death toll 
for some companies that are not up to date on technologies. However, on the other side of that, other companies are growing. You know, I read a story about uh, a young lady, she's got a candle shop. You know, when the pandemic hit, you know, her, her business tanked. And she says, but through online retail, she is actually now 30% ahead of where she was last year. So everybody's a little bit different. You know, think about office space. Now that's an interesting one there. You know, there was a big shift years ago to have, you know, uh, um, people work from home, you know, to reduce, you know, the need of office space. And then it started moving back to, you know, having people in an office in a centralized location. Well, now people are having to rethink that whole concept because where you may have been able to put 20 people in a certain square footage, now you're going to have to put eight. And so how do you deal with that? How do you sit there and have people work from home? Is that going to work into your business model? Those all those things are being taken in consideration. I also read the other day that there's a migration for people from the center cities to the suburbs because they want to get into more sparsely populated environments. They don't want to be a part of what New York saw, you know, back in the spring. Now, think about that. People move to the suburbs. How will that affect, how is that going to compare to when the United States built highways back in the 50s? You know, it changed the whole dynamics of how we think. It may not be a large change today, but it may have long-term effects moving forward. Being able to have remote communications is what we're doing right now. Think about this. This is now part of the life that we live, and it's going to be more easy for people to be able to move into this. Operating systems. You know, when I was running companies, going in and fixing companies, you know, I always told people, you know, we need to hold the pieces up to the light. We need to really examine all of the various different pieces. If the piece is not broken, put it back in. No need to fix what's not broken. But as you pull it up and you say there are flaws in this, there's flaws in the strategy and what we're trying to accomplish, you need to fix that. You need to um, um, make those adjustments and then put the corrected piece back into it. Reimagining your operating system both internally and externally. I ask you, you may have that perfect operating system, but everything may be in place. But what about your clients? They may be struggling. They may be having issues with their downstream. And I promise you, if they have issues, you're going to have issues. That's going to affect your cash flow. That's going to affect your revenues. That's going to affect your expenses. It's just so what you may want to do is your sales leadership team, your salespeople, really, and you get to know your clients a little bit better. What are the issues that they're running through? You know, is there a way you can work with them, partner with them? to make them survive, help them survive. You know, many, we believe many business leaders and businesses will rally around a big idea and reimagine everything on how they work and compete. This is what should occur. You just think about it and then, you know, build on that. You know, this happened after World War II as companies completely retooled to capture the full potential of mass production and that new global mindset. We also see in today's time, a redefined global center and more widely dispersed set of local fast moving entrepreneurial teams that will report up into that global center. You know, to that extent, this makes it a perfect time to capitalize on the new found virtual works experience. So think about that. Now, it's so easy to go back to the old ways. This is over, now let's go back to what we were doing. You know, I used to have a sign in my office that said, don't let the vision of tomorrow be clouded by the duties of today or the tasks of today. It happens. You get going in your day to day and you forget about what your vision was for tomorrow. You know, when pressed, we people will think outside of the box. But again, when things go back to normal, that creativity tends to slow down. The pandemic has provided the catalyst whether we liked it or not, it has provided it. And we should continue this creative thinking. At the pits of the pandemic in the spring, people were thinking outside of the box, how do we do this? How do we you know, stretch what we're doing? Reimagine the boundaries and get your team involved. You know, they, they, they can be an influence. One, you know, multiple heads are much better than one. You know, and 
think about your success may be in partnerships. Rethinking and pushing the boundaries. It's not easy to say. It's easy to say, but it's hard to do. In an emergency, yes. And hard to do when complacent, when times normalized. Now, we have discussed assessing risk management, the reevaluating of your strategic priorities, reviewing your operating systems to develop that winning formula. One of the elements of this you may remember is I, talk, I keep talking about partnerships. And I want to share a really inspiring story of a company that was able to develop partnerships that basically saved the company. Now, this company severe, uh, addressed a severe decline during the dust of the pandemic and developed new revenues through enhanced partnerships that allowed it to survive. I call it the one button solution. This is a private aircraft company, private jets. Um, this company caters, of course, as we all know, to you know, a high net worth client, executives, private individuals wanting to go to various different locations, and they want to do it at a drop of a, at, at a moment's notice. This company saw a 90% drop in their revenues. That is a staggering number. I just, oh. Uh, but here's what happened. They reimagined a way to build back a part of their revenues, not only to survive the pandemic, but to develop a new revenue stream in the process. The problem, it was not the ability to transport. The jets were cleaned and disinfected extensively. What it turned out to be was the lack of venues and the limited need to travel. Now, their business executives Offices were closed. There was no need to fly to a meeting. Person, yeah, you know, we had Zoom, okay? Well, I have a meeting. Personal clients, you know, if they flew somebody to San Francisco for the weekend, there's no shopping. So the stores are closed. There were no sporting events. There were no restaurants. You know, they could fly there, stay in a hotel, and do nothing. So why bother to fly? So they just were not flying. Well, the solution, the aircraft company developed relationships with select destinations around the country. They developed all-inclusive pa travel packages for their clientele, and they connected the two dots to create what I refer to is the one-button solution. They, they had various different options of locations, and you select this option, and everything was taken care of for you. Now, one of the examples is they developed a relationship with Pinehurst Country Club in, in you know, Southern North Carolina. What happened here was the airline transported their clients to, in their clean jets. And upon arrival at a private terminal, the clients would be picked up and transported to Pinehurst in clean vehicles. Then they would stay in the clean hotel rooms there. And then capping all this off was yes, three to four days of golf at Pinehurst. At the end of the weekend or extended weekend, this process would be reversed. They would be transported back to the jets and flown back home. Now the beauty on this one was again, for the client, it was a one button solution. They picked Pinehurst and everything was taken care of from that point. Everybody benefited. The chartered airline benefited, the resort benefited, and the clients definitely benefited. And the beauty of this was this was a replicatable mar, uh, model. They did this with multiple locations around the country. This sustained them through the pandemic and it provided them a new revenue model that they can build on in the future. I think this is one of the most exciting thoughts of it, but guess what? This is not the only company that uh, did something like this. You know, this was thinking outside of the box and breaking the traditional mold. Being bold to develop new revenue streams and developing partnerships. And like I said, this is only one example. Oh, we all want to get to 2021, don't we? Yeah, but we need to have a plan and a budget. Now, okay, call me a nerd, call me whatever. I am the guy that I enjoy doing budget. Always have, and I've done more than I can even count on. But for the rest of you, budgeting may be stressful. But in a pandemic, 
you ask yourself, what is the right direction for next year? And then that adds a whole nother level of stress. In 2019, budgets were planned and barely out of the gate when the pandemic hit. 2020 budgets were severely affected, all focused on keeping the business going. Revenues were affected. The uncertainty of added costs, mitigated costs, anything, it affected everything. You should have or should be getting ready to by this time because we're now in October and uh, you should be working on your 2021 budgets. Uh, some groups, you know, are well into it and, and doing that. But we need to be looking at revenues, expenses, and the uncertainty that may prevail in 2021. Yes, places are opening, but cases of COVID-19 are still rising. So how does that affect everything? You know, the good news and the bad news. But it all comes into a mixture of what's going to happen in 2021. You know, how much of this uncertainty depends on your business and your industry? So let's discuss some of these issues and what we need to be doing and go from there. You know, we recommend strongly that if you are the business leader at your company, you need to lead your team and provide very clear guidance what needs to be done. You know, basically you need to discuss new revenue paths, changes in market dynamics, redundancy, Maybe a primary scenario and a secondary scenario. Okay, life gets back to normal. This is our budget for that year. But you need to have it at least in the back pocket somewhere. You know, this is what happens if things go south. This is how we're going to deal with it. If you have a senior leadership team and they report to you, have your senior leadership team involved and assist in formulating and communicating this direction. You know, when I was running this company, one company for GE, you know, I, I swore I was the stupidest guy in the room, but guess what? They all reported to me. So guess what? I won. But you know what? I took advantage of the talent that I had working with me, and you should too. That's what you're paying them for. You know, also it gets them embracing the idea, and you hear, you know, uh, competing thoughts, different thoughts. You know, with COVID-19, it's more important than ever to have direction considering all the variables and contingent assumptions. Now, I talked about clients earlier, but you know, prepare for you, but not only for you, but for your clients as well. Think about what's happening. Have your sales leadership actively engage your major clients and talk to them. What issues are they having and drill down deep? Because I promise you, if they're having problems, it is going to affect you. Now, the example I gave you earlier, you know, with the aircraft company, they still have the clients. The clients, though, were affected, and that caused them to have that issue. Again, these are not going to be big red nails in the road. They're going to be little ones that's going to stop the car from going. You know, set coal, uh, goals and have collective ownership between the teams. You know, and the budget should be everybody's on the same page, but at this time, I think it's particularly important to have everybody being on the same page. You know, with social protocols in place, do you need to revisit timeframes for budget development? You know, we normally, you know, do that first draft of budget. Let's say everybody works on it. And then two weeks later, everybody gets together. Well, how does that fit into today's environment? So, you know, take that in consideration. Look at your calendar. You want to take in consideration variables and challenges that may slow that process down. You know, working on collaboration methods with social distancing in mind. Do you need fewer people in the room? You know, when you're working on a particular uh, uh, portion of the budget, or do you need a bigger room? Can people video conference in? How do we work all those elements? It needs to be thought out well before you get deep into the process. Do you have an integrated budgeting process? If so, that's great. Everybody does their part. It flows into the central budget and you know then it's reviewed from there so you know just a lot of factors to be taken in consideration that i deal with all the time that our clients deal with all the time and it's particularly pertinent at this time of the year if you don't have an integrated process develop a process so that people can collaborate 
on the budgeting while maintaining that mindful aspect of COVID-19. Anticipate, anticipate the challenges. How will you share the documents? Could you teleconference applications? You know, does your team even know how to use, you know, teleconferencing? Do they know how to use Zoom? Yes, we all do. But I know I've had a lot of workers over the years that would have, have a clue how to do this. They're, they just don't get the technology. You know, if in person, be mindful, like get mindful again of CDC guidelines and the number of participants in a room. Plan it all out and charge your senior leadership team with making certain nothing has been missed. You know, like I said earlier, it hit, COVID-19 hit, when we were all starting our 2020 year. 2020 has been damage control addressing the pandemic and its personal and economic fallout. The high priority on next year's budget, there should be a high priority on next year's budget so we can continue on. But it's important not only to get the budget right, but it's also important to make sure that you plan for the contingencies. What's gonna happen if things don't go as we think they're going to go. Yeah, this is a critical piece of everybody's business. You know, while challenging, the more time invested, and I've found this even in great times, the more time you invest on budgets, in the year's budgets, estimating revenues, expenses, contingencies, client impacts, you know, the better you're going to be. The higher probability you will have that budgets are on track and will provide your company the clear benchmarking that it deserves. 2021, here we come. I wanna thank everybody for listening. I hope I don't hear any snoring out there, but if you have any questions, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. We'll go from there. John, I do have a question for you. The, um, it's very interesting about the airline doing the deal. I, I just wanted to ask, did, were, they, were they able to recoup? What percentage of their revenue were they able to recoup? Did they get close to back to where they were? Or what, how, how well did they do from that? I, they didn't say in the article, okay? I doubt they got back to where they were. But even if it was a 60% of their normal revenue base, you know, it's enough to be able to sustain you through that dramatic downturn. Because as we all know, 10% of your normal revenue base, you know, will take you out of business very quickly. You know, you take a look at the airlines today, you know, the, the uh, bill passed suggested they did not go through. Airlines are talking about laying off, what was it, 40,000 people? I think that was the number. You know, and, and it's just a slight shift down in the revenue, I mean, in the in the person load of airlines, and they can't sustain the oper operating system that they've got. Yeah, I mean, it's my view has always been to maintain your personnel. So when you do, when you're able to come back, you can then capitalize on market share that others are not able to. So yeah, I thought that was interesting. If I was, a, if it was me on that, what I would sit there and put it you know, you know, go back to the base that we have, but say, you know, let's refine this model of providing the one button solution for clients and possibly, you know, the next year, once things are back to normal, you might have a 20 or 30% increase in your revenues because of that. You know, of course you got to take in consideration that with the cost of additional airlines, but I, airplanes, but obviously those planes are not running at hundred percent capacity. They're probably running at 80% capacity at best, just downtime. I think the real takeaway is from this conversation is, you know, thinking about tomorrow, planning for what you don't expect to see. You know, like I said, I've done plenty of budgets over the years and it is quantifying everything that we think is going to happen. Revenues are always the big F, but you can probably get pretty close to it, you know, uh, based on historical numbers and just experience. But when you have what happened this year and revenues just dropped down to 25%, 50% of what they were, you know, it'll crush your business. So yeah, it's planning and thinking about it.
Any other questions? I hope I don't hear snoring out there. <laughs> Very hey, important. John, I compliment you on your emphasis on budget. It seems like everybody's regrouping plans, it focuses on sales and how do we get back to where we were and they don't really look at the total budget to find out where they're most vulnerable and uh, uh, that impacts their their tactics of, of implementing the strategy. So compliment. I appreciate that. No, I agree completely. And I think they're looking at things are going to go back to normal from a revenue standpoint. But you don't know if your clients have some underlying issue. Because if you're in the pick it electronics industry, if you're in the construction industry, what's happening in that world? And you know, how are your clients, if you're supplying contractors or you know, companies like that, you know, what's happening? How is that going to affect you? Because I promise you, you know, you have a hundred clients and half of them start having issues. It's going to affect your cash flow. It, it will do that. You know, I've got a person I talked to yesterday. Um, they have an injection molding company. They have offices all over the world. And they were talking about everything had been shut down and they've not been able to, you know, commute. And they've seen that dramatic drop in revenues, but they're surviving through. Thank goodness for them. But you know, everybody's got their story to tell. And everybody's story is a little bit different. And that's why, you know, when I start working with a client, the first thing I do is I will spend, I will give you time. I've talked to you for an hour, two hours, really understanding what your issues are, because there's no cookie cutter approach to any of this. There's no cookie cutter approach to your budget. There are a lot of intricate details in it that really be, need to be explored. You know, you ask the questions and then you prescribe a solution. And I think that's what's made us effective. I think that's what Danielle, I started working with Danielle and it was asking the questions and really understanding what, you know, the opportunity she has is. Then you become an active part of helping her. And uh, I, I also look at it that I won't work with a client that is looking for a two week engagement. You know, come work with us, tell, give us a report and let us go. No, this is really something that the work we do is a longer term process. So we'll work with clients for three months at a minimum. And, and just because it takes that training and bending and, you know, that collaboration of, collaboration of thoughts. When I walk in to run a company, I'd always say it was a, at least a year process to really understand the cycle of that company. The next year you're making changes, but third year you're running hard. You're, you've got it going the way you want it to go. So yeah, I guess it's been there, done that. But yes, I really do like doing budgets. Guy, I don't know if Guy, you're, you're on to mute. Them. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know. If oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. My whole office just walked past my office. So I had it muted to make sure y'all didn't hear them laughing. Um, so I made a mistake in our meeting. So it, it, you know, you can participate in this still. We do a happy dollars and I skipped it from my, I had the same agenda from our last meeting where I intentionally put it after the speaker. So we're going to go ahead and do our happy dollars to end yeah. our meeting today. I remember Buster, that. do you want to lead us through our happy dollars? And if you happy dollars, baby. green chair off, please, John. Oh yeah. 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 There you go. All right. I guess we don't have any. <laughs> hey guys, this is Eric. Got a happy dollar. Uh, so recently accepted an opportunity as a financial rep with Northwestern Mutual. So um, look forward to helping folks pursue and achieve their financial goals. Nice, nice. Buster, I got one. Go ahead, uh, Bobby C. I don't know. I'm sure you've all gotten uh, robo calls where they're going to extend your car warranty. And uh, I happened to take one the other day and I was excited because my car is 21 years old and it has 382,000 miles on it. It was my luckiest day. <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> no, they turned me down. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
that's really sad, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Hey, Buster, I got one. I got right, uh, an anniversary coming up, and we're taking the day off tomorrow and, and going on a hike. So excited for that. Where are you going to go? Uh, Pilot Mountain. Oh, yeah. Nice hike. Okay, Kim and Lisa have one. We played, we played in the district golf outing last week and we had a great time. Ralph Jones and my husband Brian and Lisa and I played and I want you to know that it was a lot of fun, but we didn't score real well. But that wasn't it. that wasn't why we were there. We were there for the camaraderie and you know to represent the club. So we want you to know we had a great time doing it. Well, thank you for representing us. We uh, we need some good representation. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So did Ralph play from the Red Tees? <laughs> no, Ralph can hit the ball. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Ralph was, uh, my husband could get the drive when his drive hit the fairway, then Ralph went for it. And let me tell you, it was like a cannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would have ever thought Ralph has a six handicap? Wow. I'm wondering if he works. <laughs> yes, but only when he's sitting on a riding mower. <laughs> Remember that picture? Yeah. I got a happy dollar. All right. So my husband got his red badge this past Monday for the satellite club. So that, that's my happy dollar. I'm excited. Very nice, very nice. Congratulations. All right, anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, well, Grandpappy Lewis um, thought it was very appropriate in these times that uh, he always used to say, I may disapprove of what you have to say, but I will defend to the death your right to be punished for saying it. So. <laughs> Thank you, Buster. Good job on the joke there. So that's it for our meeting. We're going to um, wrap it up. I, again, if people have any input on how we can have a hybrid live meeting, the board meeting will be October 13th, and the board will all sit down to discuss it. I, you know, for once I welcome everybody's input because I'm trying to come up with a solution to allow us to all meet. So go ahead and send over, everybody send your emails and that's the end of our meeting. Have a great week. Bye.